Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson and today we're going to tell you or I'm going to tell you a story about one of my patients whose name is Blueberry. Now Blueberry is a very heartwarming story of a dog who is a fighter, a dog who has been through quite a lot. Her story trying to get through a very traumatic event and there's two reasons that I wanted to make this video. Number one, because I think this is an amazing story and number two, Blueberry needs your help. So if you guys are able to donate a little bit to Blueberry, there'll be details down in the description below. And Blueberry's story is pretty interesting. So the first time that I saw Blueberry, she was six days post, so after she had been attacked by another dog. This other dog was something like a German Shepherd. She was brought to me by um, a lady who has a very big heart. And this is one of the puppies that she had sold. Um, and she'd sold them to this other uh, couple and they had wanted the, to keep this dog and do the best they could, but they just could not care for her uh, as far as her veterinary bills after she had been attacked. And so they called her before you know they decided, yes, we're gonna euthanize. Now, I don't necessarily think euthanasia at this point would have been the wrong option. I would not have been very upset about, you know, saying, you know, this is too much to put her through. Let's not do that. That's not fair to her. But instead, you know, we did decide that we're going to at least try. We're going to try to go for this. The lady who um, has adopted her back, I guess, in some ways, said, let's go ahead. Let's try. Let's do our best. So Blueberry came to us in a very, very rough shape. So she had, at this point, she had severe skin infections, um, not just like on the surface, but those puncture wounds had caused what's called cellulitis. Now, cellulitis is when the tissue below the skin gets infected, and that bacteria can very easily spread across underneath that layer called the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer. It can spread in that layer very, very quickly and can cause very severe inflammation, very severe swelling. And in the case of Blueberry, both of her front feet were severely swollen. So I'm going to show the first couple pictures because they're not super graphic. Um, I'm going to actually post another video, um, which basically is just going to show her progression up to this point in full detail, just because if I ever do get monetized, I would like at least one of these videos to be um, allowed to be monetized. So just so that that's, that's clear. If you wanna see that video, uh, there will be a link up here as soon as it's live. Now, Blueberry also had two ulcers, so an ulcer in both of her eyes, and that's where the cornea, the outer surface of the eye, has a defect in it. Now this defect has also been infected. I don't know if these ulcers were a result of just her not doing well in general or if they were a result of the dog attack. Uh, I don't know. She also had a very bad part of her ear. So her ear had been damaged severely by this other dog. Um, and when she came in, it was just very swollen. She had an ear infection in both ears that was unrelated to her current uh, traumatic event. So Blueberry was obviously in really rough shape. And so we did what we could do. We started to bandage with a bandage type called a wet to dry. Now wet to dry bandage is basically trying to suck out any extra edema or the fluid buildup that can occur within that skin and in that tissue. Um, and there were several open wounds that we were gonna try to suck out all of that edema. So we did a wet to dry bandage and we started her on IV antibiotics because the biggest concern I had at this point was what if she went septic where bacteria was starting to replicate in the bloodstream. This would very quickly have caused severe, severe symptoms and she would have probably died had she gone septic. So we started IV antibiotics right away and we put her on some IV pain medication as well. Now. Through the next few days, we continued to keep her on IV antibiotics. We kept doing bandage changes and we kept trying to relieve as much of that edema and get rid of as much of that infection as we could. Um, about three days in, we did what's called debridement. Now debridement is where you can go and you cut out, physically remove any dead tissue. Because the dead tissue, first of all, doesn't have any feeling. It has no blood supply. 
and it's a very good ground for bacteria to continue to replicate. So we got rid of any of that. Now, at this point, she had a couple flaps of skin that were starting to separate. Now, the reason that this happened was that with all of the swelling, it started to compromise that layer between the skin and the tissue underneath. And although that sometimes you can attach that skin back to the underlying tissue, it can be very difficult and it's nearly impossible when there's any type of bacteria or infection present. So through this time, like I said, there was a couple flaps of skin and on her left arm specifically was definitely the most severe. Her toes were the most swollen and she just had the most edema. And eventually over the next week and a half or so, it ended up that the majority of the skin on that leg died. And it's unfortunate that it did die, but there was not a lot else that we could do. We had tried compression sleeves. We had tried, you know, we've been doing IV antibiotics. We were trying to do everything we could to pull out as much of that edema as we could, but it just ended up dying. Um, so at that point, I started doing a sugar bandage. And this is where you take straight sugar from table sugar and it has a very high osmolarity. Osmolarity is basically, it means that it has a, the ability to draw water. And so the sugar was really, really good at pulling water out and pulling a lot of edema out and actually ended up being able to pull a lot of the infected material out as well. So we ended up doing sugar bandages and we changed them daily for several days in that time period. And at some point we just had so much dead skin that started to dry out that we ended up removing it. I'm not gonna show those pictures because they're just probably too graphic for most people. And if you do want to go see them, again, there'll be a video down in the description with the detailed pictures of what's going on with her. Now, up to this point, you know, she had still been doing well, but her eyes were still struggling. We still were just struggling with so much. She didn't want to get up and walk. She was still eating really well, which is good. But the other thing that we were starting to fight with is what's called hypoproteinemia. Now, at first, when she had the dog attack, I suspect that she lost quite a bit of blood. And at this point where we were in her healing process, we had now lost a lot of the proteins that are within the blood. And so her protein levels were very, very low. And the reason that this happens is during the healing process, the body basically tries to keep the area moist for healing with, with serum, which is the liquid part and sometimes part of the protein part of the blood. And so you'll actually get a protein loss through these wounds. And so she actually started to lose a significant amount of protein through all of her open wounds at this point. And so that is the other thing that we were fighting is we were trying to keep her protein levels high enough to continue to heal and actually be able to pull a lot of the edema out of her legs because the less protein that's in the blood, the more likely they are to struggle with edema. The other reason that she had such significant edema was because of the very compromised lymphatic system. The lymphatics are part of the body where they basically take any excess fluid that is not directly in a blood vessel and they can take that back to be put and processed through both the liver. They basically will take all of that extra stuff throughout all of those cells and they'll take it back and put it back into the bloodstream further up the body. But when that lymphatic system is compromised, what can happen is, is there, there's no way to get rid of that excess fluid anymore. And most of those lymphatics are directly under the skin. Um, some of them are other places, but that's kind of the big part is right under the skin. Now, fast forward, we've been able to get rid of most of the dead tissue and we've been trying to build what's called granulation tissue. Now, the body does this by putting down a chaotic fibrous tissue. So the tissue doesn't have a lot of structure. It's very, very chaotic in the way the fibers are interweaving. It's a very fragile tissue, but granulation tissue is necessary because one, it's very difficult for bacteria to grow on it and it's very difficult for bacteria to grow in it, nearly impossible. And also it's a very good place for the skin to start to grow back over because it's very high in nutrients and it's able to help to repair the damaged area. Now the granulation tissue bed started to cover all of the areas that were exposed. So bones, muscles, nerves, tendons were all exposed on those front two legs. And so we were able to trim back a lot of that dead tissue 
and get a good granulation tissue by continuing to bandage and create an environment where granulation tissue likes to form. Now we're gonna fast forward even a little further. We've been waiting on a really, really cool technology that is, um, this is the first time I've used it, but I've seen some really good results in some pictures and um, some reviews that have been really good. And it's actually using codfish skin as a graft. Now I had thought originally about doing a full thickness skin graft with blueberry. And that means taking the full thickness of skin and moving it to a new area of the body. The problem is, is that does have a rejection problem. It sometimes will be rejected. And the only way to prevent it from being rejected is to keep basically completely immobilized the whole area. And that can be very difficult, especially with how big of a wound there was and Basically, it turned into a full degloving injury where the skin was completely removed, especially in that left arm. Now, the right arm had started to get a strip of skin that started to actually grow and expand. And so the right arm is not nearly as compromised as the left. The left arm, however, is just very, very compromised and there's no skin left basically from the shoulder all the way down to the carpus, which is down here by the wrist. And so I thought about doing full thickness skin graft and that's what I was planning. But in doing some research, I saw this codfish skin product where you use this codfish skin to create an environment where the skin can replicate much more rapidly. And basically it's going to put down a scaffolding for the skin to grow over and those skin cells to integrate into and be able to reproduce much more rapidly and not have to produce their own scaffolding beforehand. And I thought this was really interesting and so we ordered it and we waited and we waited and we waited. And finally today, we put on the codfish skin graft. And so that's where we are today. Blueberry is in a little more pain than she has been recently because of the needing to basically move and transpose some of her normal skin. And that can cause some significant pain in the sutures and the swelling. Um, associated with all of that can be a little bit hard um, for a couple days. And so we're trying to keep her comfortable, we're trying to keep her immobile so that both the fish skin can actually integrate into her body as well as making sure her skin that I moved a little bit is going to stay in place and not going to die. What can you guys do to help? Well, as you can imagine, Blueberry's medical bills are very high. It's not, it cheap to keep her hospitalized for this period of time. Her medications are expensive because of just how long she's been on many of them. The skin grafting procedure is very, very expensive. Um, just the codfish skin graft by itself is several hundred dollars um, per piece. And it took multiple pieces. So if you guys want to help donate for Blueberry, there's a GoFundMe link down below. And I would encourage you guys to go there and donate. Um, Kylie is a fantastic person with a big heart and she wants the best for Blueberry. And so in order to continue funding her to get her where she needs to go, it would be really helpful if you guys could donate to her and uh, donate to Blueberry. And I will say from, from my side that I know that it's going to her. Um, you know, we're not going to be using it elsewhere. It's not going to be misused. This is gonna be going to help save blueberry so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you want to go look at the uh, montage of how her wound has changed over time i'll leave a link down below go check that out as well um, that one will never be monetized hopefully this video will be someday i will probably post an update video once we've seen some more healing in a couple of weeks um, if you guys have questions in the meantime feel free to leave them in the comments down below have a fantastic rest of your day guys we'll see you in the next video Thank you.